I done told people before the fucking market opened. Didn't I? And not only, this is CME. It is now 7.20. The swing high, $6 down. It came right back up to the swing high in three, six minutes. And to be a CME trader, you're buy down here. And then you wait for the move. And then you cash it in. Three minutes, six minutes. Ho, 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 ho. Let me pause. All right. I'm going to talk a little bit more about the indexes from the training tapes that we had yesterday. And I'm not going to use a three-minute chart because it's pointless. But what is good to use here is, once again, here is the weekly chart. Um, we've had a good move off the March lows right here, 94.64. We're still overbought for a number of weeks. And today's Monday. And we have the beginning of a weekly reversal bar. We like to use the weekly charts on these because basically overall within the weekly movements, we are getting to uh, the point of no return. And we've been up here for five, six weeks. Um, the distribution that we talked about is uh, was down 90 points on the Dow at one time. And we were down here more and we talked about fund managers coming in buying. We talked about the left side of the tape on the bid and the ask. That's where those underlining bids get triggered because someone's there to sell it to them. And then they have stop market orders down below the market. But we are going to go through this process. And if we keep going into the earnings season, this is just at the beginning. There is more upside that these people will try to push it to the point of no return. The point of no return here to me is 96 and a half. 2% higher on the percent DS on the weekly. That's the Dow. Now, let's take the NASDAQ 100 here. Let's put that right there. Percent DS continues to climb at 96. We're going, hey, there are times in these exuberant moves where they can take it to the point of no return. We talked about that before. NASDAQ 100, 96% percent, percent DS on a weekly chart means that even with the slight downtick right here in the NASDAQ 100, this is the NASDAQ 100, is that it's only down 2.39. However, we're peaking here. And look, folks. Can they go to, to the point of no return before everyone gets their head busted with an axe? Yeah, it can. We've been watching it for five weeks. One, two, three, four, five. Um, that's where we're at there. NASDAQ comp is only down slightly from where it originally was. Let's take a look again. Here we are, 95.78 to the point of no return. That's this index, NASDAQ comp, on a weekly percent DS. Can they take it up to the maximum? We don't very rarely see that. And if we go into an earning season and we continue on this path, oh my gosh, all of our short positions for the earning season is going to be the opposite side of everyone else's on, excluding Yahoo, Google, and CME, those three stocks. Um, will run invert to the overall markets. And we're, this is just day one again of a new day. That's the NASDAQ comp. Let's go back over here to your S&P 500. Um, let's take a look. Now, the S&P 500 can go to higher levels, meaning that as it climbs the wall of worry, there is a little bit more upside to that 1103 area, slightly above 1100. This is 92.95. This is just, even though you can see that the S&P 500 is down and we've come off of this tick, but we have maintained a five week overbought situation on these indexes. And those are the four indexes. What I will say to conclude this tape is that something's going to give. 
And when it does, there's going to be some good short-term trading when that dip buyer is met with the seller on these indexes. And basically, that means that the stocks that are overbought are going to get creamed, and the stocks that are underbought, well, they're going to continue to kind of like move along based on the fundamentals. And that's just a recap at 8.04 Pacific Standard Time, September 21, 2009, and I'll stop that tape. And, folks, remember.